viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. China pushes its belt and road projects and Taliban ruled Afghanistan. Pakistan intensifies efforts to revive terrorism in India. And Pakistan faces severe human rights crisis, a report by Human Rights Commission of Pakistan reveals. After making its way into economically weak and vulnerable countries at the pretext of Belt and Road Initiative, China is now looking to expand its operations on what on Afghanistan as well. Pakistan, which has been living under the burden of Chinese debt, is fueling Beijing's plan. A few days ago, Islamabad convened a trilateral meet of foreign ministers with China and Taliban ruled Afghanistan to discuss extension of Belt and Road Initiative to Afghanistan and various other issues of China's interests. We have a report. China has now dragged in the Taliban regime in Afghanistan to solve its ambitious and insidious objectives in South Asia. After bankrupting Pakistan through its multi-billion dollar project China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC, China is eyeing at Afghanistan to extend its Belt and Road Initiative. Debt-ridden Pakistan has been directed by China to resolve its issues with the terrorist group Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan TTP through dialogues. China is aware that the terrorist organization could prove to be a major roadblock to its nefarious plans. In order to do so, Islamabad convened a trilateral meet of foreign ministers with China and Afghanistan a few days ago. The meeting was attended by Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Quinn Gang, Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari and Acting Foreign Minister of Afghanistan Amir Khan Muttaki. China's Foreign Minister Quinn Gang, speaking on the sidelines of the trilateral meet, cunningly sought affirmation from Pakistan and Afghanistan that the two countries would take measures to protect Chinese personnel and projects, essentially CPEC, in their regions, so that China could further extend its Belt and Road Initiative to Afghan territory. Prior to this trilateral meet, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto had appeared in the SEO Foreign Minister's Summit in India, where he portrayed China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC as a force multiplier for the regional connectivity. However, the project violates the territorial integrity of India and opposed by the locals in Pakistan itself. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor can similarly, similarly be a force multiplier for regional connectivity. For too long, we have lamented the lack of connectivity between our economies, an impediment to regional trade and investment. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor does not only connect Pakistan to its neighbor China. CPEC offers all countries invested in the commonality of the future of this region to take the journey further and connect the dots towards full regional economic integration. It must be noted that CPEC passes through the illegally occupied regions by Pakistan, the Gilgit Baltistan and POK. The two regions belong to the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir of India. Bilawal Bhutto also made a veiled remark on India, making a statement, let's not get caught up in weaponizing terrorism for diplomatic point scoring. He further tried to dodge the label of global terror perpetrator by emotionally referring to his mother, Benazir Bhutto's assassination, and maintain that Pakistan is a victim of terrorism rather than a perpetrator. Terrorism continues to threaten global security. Let's not get caught up in weaponizing terrorism for diplomatic point scoring. When I speak on this topic, I do so not only as the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, whose people have suffered the most in terms of number of attacks and number of casualties. I also speak as the son of, as the son of a mother who was assassinated at the hands of terrorists. I feel the pain of this loss 
empathize with the victims across the world in a way that most cannot. These statements from Pakistan's foreign minister came at a time when Indian security forces lost five lives fighting Pakistani terrorists in Rajori district of Jammu and Kashmir and five more in a terror attack in Poonch area. In a strong rejoinder, the Indian Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar in a composed manner without calling out the name but the hypocrisy of the nation slammed Pakistan for terrorism and its portrayal of SIPAC as a key connectivity project for SEO nations. Many key issues confronting the world today. Let me, however, make two points that should guide our policies and actions. One, noting that combating terrorism is a core SEO goal, we must not allow anybody, individuals or states, to hide behind non-state actors. Two, while connectivity is key to progress, it must come with respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of all member states. Whether it is the SEO meet or the trilateral meet held in Islamabad, China operates Pakistan from behind the stage. Ever since Taliban has taken over Afghanistan in 2021, Beijing has pursued its economic interests in the country and campaigned for Taliban's international recognition as the Afghanistan government. Pakistan and China, during the trilateral meet, also advocated for lifting UN sanctions against the Taliban regime. In return, the cash-strapped Taliban is harboring hopes of receiving massive Chinese investments amidst a severe economic crisis. If Taliban regime falls against the trap set up by China, the Afghan nation too would meet the same fate as Pakistan did. The Islamic Republic of Pakistan is facing one of the most severe human rights crises amidst the prevailing political and economic chaos in the country. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, in its latest report, has highlighted the failure of the legislature, judiciary and the executive in fulfilling their duty to safeguard citizens from political and economic exploitation. The incidence of enforced disappearances, the safety of religious minorities or lack thereof and the diminishing rights of women and children have remained a grave cause of concern. We have a report. The year 2022 was chaotic and fatal for the people in Pakistan. The devastating floods last monsoon led to extreme poverty, high inflation, medical crises and unemployment. The country's economy not only took a nosedive, but a political upheaval unfolded following the ousting of former Prime Minister Imran Khan through a no-confidence motion in April of last year. These calamities added to the woes of the people in Pakistan. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, in its almost 300-page annual report, has raised concerns over Pakistan's human rights situation, not only economic and political, but security as well. Terrorism-related incidents in the country claimed 533 lives in 2022. The report hits the government hard for their growing intolerance towards dissenting opinions and free speech, and for the enforced disappearances of political activists and journalists. The report also highlighted custodial torture and sedition charges against political opponents, journalists and activists. The reason why enforced disappearances are increasing or the, this method is used by the, uh, by the military, again the military is involved in this, is because um, they do not want, uh, they do not have a justification for uh, you know, imprisoning people. So they just put them in secret prisons. These are political prisoners but they have no political representation because uh, they're in secret prisons and where they're tortured, where they're you know, sometimes even killed. 
The instances of enforced disappearances of political activists, journalists, and human rights defenders remains a grave concern for the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan. As per its report, at least 2,210 enforced disappearances cases remained unsolved by the end of 2022. Last year, Punjab reported 57 cases of enforced disappearances, whereas Sindh reported 67 cases. Khyber Patonkwa reported 202, and in Balochistan, a staggering 257 such cases came to light. The Human Rights Commission is further concerned by the extrajudicial killings of missing persons in the country. It cited an incident in July of 2022 when the Pakistani intelligence agency, the ISI, claimed killing nine militants in the Ziarat area of Balochistan. However, after protests by the relatives of these missing persons in Quetta, it emerged that five of those killed were forcibly disappeared persons and were not in fact militants. Pakistan still uh, thinks that the, these are the people whom I have to you know, suppress and oppress them till I have, you know, muscles. So they are using their muscle to control the land. Uh, on the other side, the Baloch people are, they are being uh, uh, systematically eliminated, in, uh, disappeared by force, uh, displaced from their uh, areas and uh, facing extrajudicial killings. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan also indicated their concern for the declining press freedom index as the country ranks 150th amongst 180 countries and territories across the globe. The report cited the journalists and the vernacular press who said that they were still compelled to toe the government line and could not report independently for fear of reprisal by state and non-state actors. People's issues from Balochistan and Khyber Pathankwa received negligible coverage in the mainstream media, especially on private TV news channels. This was especially true of issues such as the ongoing conflict between the state and Baloch nationalists, grievous human rights violations such as enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings, poor governance, as well as matters of economic and social concern. As the economic and political situation remains grim in Pakistan, the human rights situation is expected to deteriorate, leaving Pakistani citizens with one more area of despair in their already grim lives. Let us now turn our attention to India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the situation is tense. Over the last few months, the region has seen a surge in terrorist attacks against the security personnel. In the most recent instance, five Indian Army personnel were killed during Operation Trinetra in the Kandi area of Rajori district. This episode has once again highlighted Pakistan's hypocrisy as terrorists trained on its own land struck security personnel in Jammu and Kashmir while its foreign minister Bilawal Bhutto was lecturing about terrorism at SEO meet in India. A report. On May 5th, five Indian Army soldiers lost their lives in the Operation Trinetra in the Kandi area of Jammu and Kashmir's Rajori. The attack occurred during Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto's visit to India to attend the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting in India's Goa. The point in time of these events was striking because the basic objective of the SCO, of which Pakistan is a full member, is to work together to combat terrorism, extremism and separatism, as well as to build a regional security framework free of radical influences. This incident has once again exposed Islamabad's hypocrisy, as on one hand, while Bhutto was preaching on terror in Goa, terrorists trained on his very soil targeted security forces in Jammu and Kashmir. Victims of terrorism do not sit together with perpetrators of terrorism to discuss terrorism. Victims of terrorism defend themselves, counter uh, acts of terrorism, they call it out, they delegitimize it, and that is exactly what is happening. So, to come here and preach these uh, hypocritical birds uh, as though we are on the same boat, I mean, they are 
uh, they are committing acts of terrorism. And, you know, I don't want to jump the gun on what happened today, but I think we're all feeling equally outraged. So, uh, so I, I think, I mean, let's, let's be very, very clear on this. You know, on this matter, the terrorism matter, I mean, I, I would say uh, Pakistan's uh, credibility is depleting even faster than its forex reserves. For Pakistan, a peaceful Jammu and Kashmir is the worst suffering. It has to keep the region on the boil to project its disputed status. While an elaborate anti-terrorism grid in Kashmir has restricted space available for terrorists, they have begun expanding their footprints in the south of the Peer Panjal. Rajori and Punch districts in Jammu region, which were declared terrorism-free more than a decade ago, have been rocked by a series of deadly attacks since October 2021. A total of 26 army personnel, including three officers and five perpetrators, and seven civilians have been killed in eight terror attacks since October 11, 2021 in the Twin Districts. In January this year, terrorists had attacked Dangri village in Rajori district, resulting in the loss of seven civilian lives. Despite an intensive search operation, the perpetrators were not located. Even in the current case, security agencies have launched operations intending to locate and eliminate those responsible. India has decided to have G20 over there, the meeting with the delegates coming from all the countries over there to show and showcase Kashmir, what developments have been there, so that the entire world takes notice of it and what Pakistan's propaganda has been that to show that Kashmir is a territory where the Muslims are being harassed, the Muslims are not being allowed to perform their religious rites and other things and all, that is put to rest. Now, Pakistan wants to thwart all that because they do not want that this G20 summit should be a success in, Pakistan, in Kashmir and therefore they have ordered all their underground overground workers plus some infiltration has taken place in the Jammu sector, in the Rajori Punch area, wherein they, those people have taken a hideout in, in the dense forests over there, who are now creating all these problems of attacking the security forces and others. The security forces have launched operations. Unfortunately, lives have been lost of the security forces, but that in such operations is always there. The operations that have been launched by the security forces now is to ensure that these militants who are functioning over there in Jammu region are eliminated and no foreign militant who is transported or who has infiltrated from uh, Pakistan is present on the Indian soil. The terror attacks in Punch and Rajori serve as a dismal reminder to India that Pakistan will continue to perpetrate cross-border terrorism and Indian security forces cannot relax their vigilance even when a ceasefire has been agreed upon diplomatically between the two parties at the LOC. Security and intelligence agencies have been placed on high alert and India is fully prepared to host the G20 summit in Srinagar this month. Pakistan on the other side may need to prepare for another Balakot or surgical strike style scenario. China, Pakistan's all-weather ally, has once again blocked India's proposal at the United Nations to designate Pakistani-based Jaish e Mohammed terrorist Abdul Rauf Azhar as a global terrorist under the 1267 Sanctions Committee. Azhar, the deputy commander of the terror organization Jaish e Mohammed and the younger brother of the group's founder Masood Azhar, is well known for his involvement in a number of terrorist attacks in India. A report. China has always defended its client state Pakistan in United Nations. The country, being the close ally of Islamabad, has always created hurdles of known Pakistani terrorists. Recently, China objected a proposal by India to blacklist senior Pakistani-based Jaish-e-Mohammed terrorist 
Abdul Rauf Azhar as the global terrorist under the 1267 Al Qaeda Sanctions Committee. Born in Pakistan in 1974, the terrorist has been involved in planning numerous terror strikes in India, including the hijacking of Indian Airlines aircraft IC814 in 1999, the attack on the parliament in 2001. and the targeting of the IAF base in Pathan court in 2016 we have to realize that china has now become far more blatant than what it used to be its recent action on putting a technical hold on rof this is aimed actually against india because if you look at the other major powers these terrorists do not act against the other major powers they act only against india and china has made its position vis-a-vis -vis india very clear when it comes to actions if not in words so i am not surprised at all china is trying to use pakistan pakistan agencies uh the actions of pakistan agencies to destabilize india to keep india perpetually off balance this has been their tactic for a strategy for a long period of time beijing going on by pass pattern typically places a technical hold on india related proposals at the 1267 committee just before the deadline to raise objections to lapse last year China had put a technical hold on number of proposals by India and other western countries to target Pakistan based terrorists for UN sanctions. In June last year, China had put a hold on joint proposal by India and the US to designate Abdul Rahman Makki, the deputy chief of Pakistan based terror group Lashkar-e-Taiba, under the 1267 sanctions committee. In August Beijing vetoed India and the United States bid to designate Pakistani terrorist Sajid Mir as the global terrorist under the 1267 Al Qaeda Sanctions Committee. Mir is India's most wanted terrorist and the main handler of the 2611 Mumbai attacks which shook the entire world. China put a hold on the Lashkar Chief Commander's UN terror designation after Islamabad detained and sentenced him for 15 years under terror financing charges. earlier in 2022 observers believe that china is misusing its status as a permanent member of the un security council in order to stop pakistan based terrorists on the un security council sanctions committee for al qaeda and isil daesh at the chinese tactics vis-a-vis -vis putting terrorists uh, blacklisting of terrorists on hold in conjunction with china uh, with pakistan is a jugalbandi two countries have perfected for a long period of time so you have a situation where the world can no longer ignore the activities of a particular terrorist and wants to take formal action on it formal action also means branding de facto branding the country from that from which that person operates so here pakistan's fair weather friend comes into play and prevents that from happening on technical grounds now This is something this is a task that Pakistan has taken for itself for a long period of time. Numerous terrorist organizations including Al-Qaeda, Jaish-e-Mohammed and Lashkar-e-Taiba are active in Pakistan. Pakistan has praised its own efforts to prevent terrorism in a variety of international forums including the United Nations and the Financial Action Task Force. Moreover despite the fact that Pakistan was removed from the cradle of terror funding and money laundering after 4 years on the list the country continues to provide sanctuary money and training to terrorist groups And with that we come to the end of this edition of News Week South Asia We'll be back next week with more news views and analysis from the subcontinent Meanwhile Do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.